levels today as we're going through it. So that way you're able to get your practice board as well. Jason Capital's oh. quiz will probably be next Wednesday. I think I said that last week because it's coming yesterday. So just make sure that you're staying on top of it. All right, so one through five. I'm still on chapter four. Why am I in chapter four? One through five on page number. Let me get over there. 79. All right, number one. All right, Dennis, this is what you want. The advantages of Patriot is the answer to our question. Yep, describe okay. the advantages of Patriot's head and the war for defense. The advantages of Patriot's head and the war for defendants were they knew the lay of the land and that they owned most of the land. All they had to do was protect it. Yep, that was popular support. So they also had experienced military leaders like George Washington that had fought in the French and Indian War. Those had foreign aid. France ends up coming, coming to be one of our major allies because partly because France just wants to be petty and better to Great Britain. So part of the reasons why they come over is because they want to be able to help us out. All right, number two, what nation, well, I can just give it away. What nation was America's most valuable ally? All right. France was America's most valuable ally. But uh, didn't they give us Britain. So the reference between British history, that's what I'm going to say, the nickname 
patriots or Whigs. Loyalists or Tories, again, that's an idea that they are taking English history. So a Tory, this is a reference onto the, onto the uh, pro-monarchy party in Britain. So they're looking at English history and they're taking nicknames from English history. Now, keep in mind, was it a good idea to be a loyalist in the colonies in this time period? Raise your hand. Alright, well, either raise your hand. No, it wasn't. You either got persecuted, imprisoned, or killed in some cases, in, even in America. And this is not a good time period to be loyal to the king. So again, if the country is doing something that you didn't like, it would be best to go home and go back to England at this point, where some of them did, because they decided life in America is unhealthy right now. So again, they're just pointing out again that even in America, bad things happen because people are getting emotional, and so it's not a perfect time period to be around. All right, so the Patriots have faced advantages and disadvantages. There are about three major areas, technically four if you're splitting up that first one, where, where, where the Americas had distinct advantages. So mark them in this book as well. So we had, we had strategic advantages and popular support. So what was one of our strategic advantages? What does that mean, Chris? We knew the land. Yes, yeah, so it was our territory and our land. So we knew how to fight in it. Plus it's our land and we want to defend our land. No one likes to have troops marching through your cornfields. That's bad for your horns. So people knew, okay, we want we need to defend our area. So, so we had strategic advantage and get popular support. Most everyone, a lot of people knew we want to be able to keep it all of our territory. So even even the loyalists, they understood no, we don't want it in our section of land. We also had experienced military leaders like George Washington who had fought in the French and Indian War. They knew how to fight, and they knew how to fight in America's territory. So they knew what to do for it. We also, also had British hindrances. British, there were several reasons as to why the British did not want to come over, or come over, come over to the United States to fight. They knew that it would cost money. They knew they would have to be taxed for it. They knew that they would be fighting them in the military territory. So because of that, most people in England did not want to go to war against the Americans. They also, in a lot of cases, had cousins or friends or family in America. Because remember, the Americans living in America, they were from England in most cases. So because of that, everyone knew this is my grandmother's sister's kids. So they would know, okay, these are relatives of mine. Like, I don't want to go kill them. What if I accidentally kill a family member? That's a bummer. And so that's part of the reason. So again, like, you would have people go over. So grandmother, sisters, kids. Because this is about second and third, fourth generation in this time period from the major migrations. So, and then, and then and there were even some people in England that thought, you know what, the Americans just want to be independent, just let them, why, why are we forcing them to stay with us, why? And so, there was a lot of British hindrances to where the British people did not want to get involved as much. But just the last advantage, kind of at the top of page 78, so foreign aid, France becomes our most valuable ally, so foreign aid. Holland and Spain also kind of help out a little bit, but not a whole lot. France becomes the major one, and they openly enter into, into the war as our ally later on. Right now, they don't want to get involved too much because they said, go, hmm, we've lost to Britain several times. We're tired of losing to Britain. We don't want to get sucked in into another war and lose to Britain again. We're going to just wait and just see how you guys start to do, and if it looks promising, then we'll come and join. That's normal. It was not like France was just being a coward, but it is the idea of France wanting to see how y'all doing? Are y'all gonna be smart about this or are you gonna be stupid? We wanna make sure before we actually commit. Okay. Throughout the beginning of the war, people were about to try to get Prince Franklin to help. Did you? George Washington. Technically, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was sent over to go be like the ambassador to France to try to help them. Please come, please come join us. Please come be our ally for it. So, eventually, France says, yes, yes, we will, we will be your ally. But as of right now, they're kind of having, I remember, what was the document that already listed off the reason saying why we're breaking off from England so that way France knew it wasn't just anarchy? Uh, Julian's Declaration Yeah, so that was minute. So France already knew, okay, these aren't just Americans just going crazy and just declaring anarchy. They have good solid reasons, so we want to see all this plays out. All right, so as your book points out, even some, so some people came over to come help America because they said, you know what, America has a good idea. They want to be independent, they should be independent. So make a note of these five people. Some of them are French, even though France did not officially become our ally until later. Some people still still decided, I'm gonna go over and help them. They seem like they're on the right, I wanna help them out. So Marquis de Lafayette, if you make a note of him, he was an aide or an assistant to George Washington. Baron von Steuben, he knew how to drill troops and to help them fight as a proper military unit. So he was to help out with training for it. Baron de Kaub and Fabius Kayushko, 
and Casimir Pulaski. So your book points out Baron de Kalb and Pulaski that they end up dying for America's freedom. So even though they were not Americans, they came over to help for us and they ended up giving their lives for America and to help us become free. So just made up for those five people for it. So Marquis de Lafayette, Baron von Steuben, Baron de Kalb, Thaddeus Piyushko, and Casimir Pulaski. All right, clear your disadvantages. There were basically three major areas where we had disadvantages. One of the first one was lack of unity. We did not fight as the United States of America. That was not a thing yet. We fought as like Virginia, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Delaware. We fought as 13 little countries fighting together, but we weren't talking well because remember, we only have mail at this time period. We don't have internet or text messages. So if you have to go talk to the Congress in Virginia to ask them to move the troops, you either have to send someone to go tell them. So it took time. Okay. That was the whole war? Uh, pretty much, yeah. That's one reason why George Washington is starving in Valley Forge, because they couldn't agree over how to send him supplies. The states were bickering over what route to take and how to get it there. George Washington is actively starving in Valley Forge, and Congress is arguing over how to send him supplies. Send them! And just be done with it! But they were arguing over how to get there because each little con each little state was like its own little country. So they weren't getting along well. Financial problems? We were broke. We were real broke. So because of that, we did not have a lot of gold and silver. So they were printing paper money. But what's it called whenever you just print paper money? Anyone know? Inflation. So that's where, unless we're, unless we're at the term, maybe a term your book points out, not worth a continental. It's referred to a continental currency. Basically, it just inflates itself. So that's probably going to have to we're struggling with finances. Robert Morris, he becomes superintendent of finance. He uses his own money to help fund things. King Solomon's another one as well. But he becomes superintendent of finance and he obtains a loan from France, basically using his own credit and saying, I will help pay this back. Please give us money to help fund it and we will pay you back later for it. So again, superintendent of finance. Oh, this class goes another five minutes. I totally thought my this class ended at oh, five minutes. Yes. All right, so just making note for that. So superintendent of finance, I can talk a little bit slower, please. So Robert Morris, he becomes superintendent of finance. So making note for him that he gets the loan for France for us. Hank Solomon, he is a Polish Jew. We don't hear about a lot of the Jews in this time period because it wasn't necessarily to, I guess, be healthy to be a Jew in a lot of portions of the United States of this time period. Why? Yeah, it wasn't a good idea to be Jewish. Not really, because since, again, traditionally Jews, they were still looking for the Messiah, and they weren't Christian or Protestant, they got persecuted in a lot of cases. So this was a Polish Jew, and he was helping us out for it. He, I mean, I mean, he was also a spy, which is also interesting. He got captured twice and escaped both times. So he was a good job for it. So your book just points out, points out, points out, points out the Hank Solomon, kind of an interesting character that he also helped out financially, donated his own money, a spy and evaded capture twice to help us out. All right, we're going to go back and read about George Washington because I had to skip over George Washington too early. Now we're going back. Okay, George Washington. I'll read first. You want to read first? Read first. The character of the Elegant and the Slow and the George Washington said, Dying to the front of the warfare in the next year, the Elegant Fall of the Constitution of the Earth. There are 60 tall strategies to identify the Constitution. Command all the people, have them uh, more of the Indians prepared for an air bomber to defend the Elegant. Washington needs to work for the business. All right, who wants to read that? Washington Square. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sarah Rose began in 1749 and became a country surveyor. Yep. Okay. In the 1950s, when the French backed British claims in America, Washington joined the Virginia militia and quickly rose to a position of leadership. After serving the French Indian War, Washington was asked to take a seat in the House of Bridge. You're not saying so yeah, a county surveyor. All right, don't you know? Oh, right. There you go. Stroke of independence against the government of Congress, the Congress appointed Washington to be commander in chief of the Continental Army. Those colonies have secured their independence. Washington focused his attention on forming a government that could truly be called a government of the people and for the people. He participated in the framing of the Constitution and then gave up his treasured private life to serve as the first president of the United States. George Washington's wife, George Washington's wide leadership provided future presidents with strong role models. All right, we're going to talk about George Washington again because George Washington is obviously our first president, so we're going to talk about him for a while. Do you feel left out? Yes. You can read. You can read Nathan Hall on the front page seventy nine. I'm sure you're not left out. Okay. During the British siege in New York City, Nathan Hale 
His 21-year-old school teacher attempted to relay information to George Washington about General Howe's troops. Disguised as a Dutch school teacher, Hill had almost crossed the greatest lines and he was captured. He was hanged for treason on September 27, 22, 1776. Yeah, it's just making up for him that he was not, he was told and that he did not escape. So, he ended up dying. But again, people wanted freedom so bad, they were willing to risk their lives. And in some cases, they were willing to die for it. So, Jane Hill, making up for him. Okay. Why do people have white hair like that? Why do they curl up like that? It wasn't just fashionable back then. Because it was stressful. Well, okay, now well, keep in mind, it was actually really stressful. Do you know why presidents traditionally only serve two terms? No, we make an amendment later on, but does anyone know traditionally why we serve two terms? Because by the time, because well, you have to be, a, you have to be like 35 to serve as president. Yep. Also, by the time you serve two presidencies, you're pretty old. Well, there's never been a pre there's never been a president that was thirty five. Unless you're yeah, yeah, okay. the youngest is like he was not thirty five. He was really close. I remember the exact age, but he was close. I mean that's close. So again, it's that's part of the great one. What? Oh. Maybe we're gonna talk about that later. Okay, that's not that's like not it's so not crazy. just because he was young that he got right. shot. That's not it. Okay, but anyway, George Washington decided that he wanted to retire after two terms because it is super stressful. But again, no one else really decided to push that because they said that George Washington didn't get it that way, so we're going to do it that way too. All right, my time is up now, so we'll go ahead and we'll stop there. We'll ask a few questions. White hair. Yeah, it should be ringing soon. I don't know why it hasn't. It was it's been on Bobby for having black hair. Oh, there you go. Okay, bye. I respect Bobby for having that kind of hair. <laughs> <laughs> His regular curly hair is people you had in your birth. Um, so not so